Okay, well let's move on and talk about the next term in this equation, which uh, gives us a theoretical prediction of what the acceleration due to gravity is at uh, basically any point in your survey. And uh, so this is an effect that's associated with uh, an increase or a decrease in elevation. It has a negative sign in here because if we increase uh, uh, our distance from the center of the Earth, then delta G is negative. And uh, so it's referred to as the free air term, and we would calculate it. Uh, remember we went through this before, dG dr uh, turns out to be minus 2G over R. And uh, using an average radius uh, for the Earth, uh, we we came up with a value of 0 0.3086 milligals. And again, uh, using the gravity units here, this was about uh, three gravity units. <clears throat> so it adds up over um, it adds up over you know your, your errors in elevation. Uh, of about um, 15, 16 meters would give you five milligals of, uh, of anomaly. So, if we consider these these variations of the acceleration due to gravity with uh, latitude, uh, we find that dg dr is equal to. It has three terms in it, and we're usually just using this term. Remember, the dr would delta r would come over here, and we'd have minus 0 0.3068, you know, what we what we have over here, uh, times delta R. These terms, it, it turns out, are very small, and they're usually, uh, usually ignored. So I, I will give you an idea of how small they are here in a minute. But, I mean, we're looking out here uh, four decimal places, and over here, eight decimal places, and we're looking at uh, delta G, delta R in uh, milligals. So, you know, it's a very, very, very small influence. And we usually ignore it. Um, this delta R, sometimes you'll see it as uh, Z or H. Um, you'll um, <clears throat> run into to these these expressions in just about any text on geophysics. So now, if we take a look at here, here we have um, a thousand meter difference in elevation. Uh, you know, as we come up from um, the equator to the pole, and we can see that the effect of these two terms uh, that we generally ignore turns out to be about two one thousandths of a milligal or two one hundred thousandths of a milligal or about two one hundredths of a microgal for this one hundred meter change in elevation. So so I think you know for most of our work we can get away by well you know ignoring this uh, this influence. So we often do. So again the the variation D G D R is you know as, as a function of latitude um, um, you know, varies from 0 0.3088 at the uh, equator to 0 0.30835 at the poles, and uh, uh, <clears throat> we had a 0 0.3086 here at you know kind of the mid latitude. So, so the the variations are, are fairly small, even as you even with latitude. So, so we. We often use this this term, and you know, if, if you're in the mid latitudes, uh, out to four four or five decimal places, uh, 0 0.3086 is 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 a good number to work with. And uh, z delta r h um, that uh, you know very varies quite often in, in, uh, from textbook to textbook. So, and even within a textbook. So the change in the acceleration with a change in the radius of one meter, again, is approximately 0 0.3086 milligauss per meter. Uh, it turns out to be about point, uh, cl close to a tenth of a milligauss per foot. And um, 
And as we mentioned, they, they can contribute, if they're ignored, they, they contribute significantly to the observed value of G that you have. So uh, in the case of the Karsh feature that we talked about uh, in a couple prece in, in a preceding video, um, that Karst feature produced an anomaly of only 0.4 milligauss. Now, that would be, it's just about one, just a little over 1.3 times the uh, change in G associated with a one meter change in elevation. So, if your elevations are off by a meter, then you have some random noise in your data that can be obscured or can obscure the anomalies that you're interested in, the anomalies such as this uh, Karst feature. So. So, depending on the anomalies that you're looking for, and you usually do some modeling in advance, you know the precision with which you need to measure uh, elevations, feet or, or meters, in order to be able to see the anomaly that you're, that you're looking for. <clears throat> so, this, this compensation, remember we're talking about, um, you know, we, we don't really make our observations in a hot air balloon. We are standing on the surface of the Earth. Uh, there, there just happens to be some material beneath, be, between us, and uh, our datum, which you know might often be sea level. It doesn't have to be sea level. And um, <clears throat> so we're trying to compensate for the influence of topographic uh, features. We have the um, free air term, which we just talked about, which compensates for our elevation. Uh, but when we start talking about compensating for the effects of the topographic features, uh, the mass beneath our feet and uh, the topography uh, surrounding us, uh, then we have two additional uh, terms or corrections. Uh, we'll talk about the distinction between the effect and a correction, but uh, the plate correction and the topographic uh, correction. We'll talk about this plate correction briefly. It's often referred to as the Bouguer plate term. Um, and um, um, this term is a term which is associated with a plate which is has a certain constant thickness and is infinite in extent. And we have to add that in there in order to accurately estimate what the theoretical or the predicted gravity is at a particular location. <clears throat> so we know that the sign on the free air term is negative. The sign on the Bouguer plate term is positive because we're adding in material. And um, uh, we're going to just take a, a conceptual look at this for a moment. And then uh, in the next uh, video, we'll talk about it in more mathematical terms. But <clears throat> If you're at a particular point here in your survey and you're making an observation, uh, we have the influence of this uh, infinite plate, and this topography is usually divided up into this infinite plate term, so you can see that it shaves off the tops of nearby mountains, uh, fills in the valley. So it's a pretty poor estimate of the influence of the material beneath your feet. So that's why we have to do kind of a two-term um, correction or a two-term effect. And uh, first of which consists of estimating the influence of this plate. And then secondly, incorporates the influence of the topographic features, uh, both of which, whether they're valleys or um, <clears throat> mountains, uh, reduce the extension on the spring. Uh, the mountains are above the spring. Uh, they they reduce the extension. Uh, the valleys are carved into this infinite plate. They also, you know, in other words, you're eliminating mass in the plate. Uh, below the gravimeter here, you're adding mass onto the plate above the gravimeter. So in both cases, you reduce the, uh, we'll talk about that more later, but you reduce the acceleration. To topography reduces the acceleration. Topography on the plate reduces the measured acceleration due to gravity. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> so that, that kind of in a conceptual perspective on what the plate term is, and if we, and we'll go through this later on, we'll, we'll show you where this formula comes from, but it turns out that uh, this, 
the acceleration due to gravity associated with a plate that has a thickness T or Z or H. Again, just keep in mind that, that, that um, these constants vary quite a bit. And um, you just have to know what it is that you're doing. But that the acceleration due to gravity associated with this plate would be 0 0.04192 times the density times the thickness. That would give you an answer in milligals. And we've adjusted the value of this constant so that, that we use density in grams per cubic centimeter, uh, but we can use thicknesses in terms of meters. So, uh, you know, 100 meters is a little easier to write than uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, 10,000 centimeters. So uh, that, that, that makes things convenient for us. We can also adjust this term to allow us to put Tn in feet and still have density in grams per cubic centimeter, which is a typical value that's measured on a geophysical log. So mixing units is uh, easy to do. Uh, just think about it for a moment. Here we have uh, uh, the plate term. Let's, um, you know, it could be T, could be DZ, could be H, could be Z. Uh, <clears throat> let's look at G here, but in this case, in terms of uh, CGS units, so that we have 6.6732 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters cubed over gram second squared. Uh, we multiply that times 2 pi. We get 2 pi g is equal to 4.192 times 10 to the minus 7th centimeter cubed gram second squared. So if we take a look at the acceleration due to gravity over a plate, which is, it's an infinite plate. It goes off in all directions to infinity. Uh, but it's one centimeter thick and it has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter, then we have uh, 4.192 times 10 to the minus seventh centimeters per second squared, assuming one T of one centimeter and a density of one gram per cubic centimeter. Uh, this gives us, uh, well, we have 10 to the minus seventh centimeters per second squared. Remember that a gal is uh, 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 10 to the third milligal, so we, we have uh, 4.192 times 10 to the fourth milligals, uh, 10 to the third milligals per gal. Now, <clears throat> we said that, uh, well, we're lazy. We don't want to write out those extra zeros there. We'd like to input our thicknesses in meters. So every time, you know, if this formula were to go into Excel uh, and you wanted to mix the units, you wanted to use grams per cubic centimeter for the um, uh, for the density and you wanted to use uh, meters instead of centimeters, every time you put a 1 in for your thickness, uh, you would have to incorporate a factor of, you would have to multiply the result by 100 to convert the result to centimeters. In other words, you enter a 1, uh, but it has to be in units of centimeters, so in your Excel formula you have to multiply your input thickness by 100 in order to get the uh, right answer. So, so that would change the above formula to 4.192 times 10 to the minus 2 or 0 0.04192 times the uh, density times the thickness. Again, where density is in grams per cubic centimeter and your thickness is in meters. So we're just changing the constant here to incorporate that factor of 100. We can enter units here in terms of meters and uh, <clears throat> still get uh, our answer in milligals, get the correct answer in milligals. So the next time we're going to go through a derivation of the plate term to show you how we get an expression for the acceleration due to gravity of this infinite plate, which is turns out to be a fairly simple expression, uh, 2 pi g times the density times the thickness of the plate. And um, so we'll, uh, we'll talk more about that uh, next time. And, you, and you'll find uh, this derivation in a lot of uh, geophysics texts. So you might have a look in advance. Uh, talk to you later. Thanks.